I started Paylocity because my accountant said, why don't you do it for yourself? And I said, okay. And so I started Paylocity. When I founded Paylocity, the original name was Ameripay, and we changed it several years later due to a trademark lawsuit to Paylocity. Um, we actually went through many names. I didn't like the name Paylocity at first, and I told our head of sales who brought it to me that I don't like this name. So we presented initially 600 names. We whittled it down to 35, and we said that the name that we prefer, both Christina and myself, Paylocity, of all the names that we gave to him, it was the name he hated the most. The judgment comes down, the judge says to Steve that you absolutely can rebrand your company name. He says, great. He sends me an email along with a couple of other of the senior management team. We are changing our name. We're changing it to Paylocity. Of course, this is the first that Christine or I have heard of this in the last four or five months. And, oh, by the way, Christina and Tom have two weeks to rebrand the company. That's a good example of how the company really ran in the first four or five years. Uh, it was crazy, it was fun, and we got a ton of stuff done uh, just by doing. And now I love the name Paylocity. Um, I've been wrong on a few things along the way, and that was probably one of the things I, I'm not very proud of being wrong on. <laughs> Paylocity was founded in Des Plaines, uh, in a 600 square foot basement office with no windows. It was really not the nicest office in the world. It wasn't a very nice office building. It's since been torn down and replaced with a casino. And even though I'm not a huge casino fan, I think the casino is actually an improvement. When I started at Paylocity 17 years ago, it was, pretty, it was a pretty crappy environment. Uh, we worked in Franklin Park, Illinois at the time. It was right by a set of train tracks. We shared a building with a framing company, which would routinely leave sawdust all over our desks. Our water cups would come in and be sawdust in our water cups. It was disgusting. It was not the best conditions, but we had a lot of fun. And as we grew, we kept adding rooms at that location. And then we just kept growing and growing and moved to Elk Grove. And we were so excited by Elk Grove because it was so big and we had so much parking. And then we outgrew that really fast and we had to bus people over from the other location. We shared a space, shared a wall with Wilson Sports Testing Center. Uh, so quite often you would hear, hear them hitting, you know, hitting balls and hitting golf balls. And uh, so quite often as we're sitting there working, every once in a while a ball would hit the wall and everyone would duck for cover because we thought it was coming through. We thought it was only a matter of time. <laughs> um, so it was, uh, it, it was fun, it was never boring. We were small, we were entrepreneurial, they all had to deal with me. You know, entrepreneurs are, are a little bit crazy. I have a lot of ideas. Occasionally one of them is good, and they had to sort through all my ideas to find the good ones. Uh, they, uh, Jen and Melody and Aaron and all my early employees, had to deal with this crazy entrepreneur pushing 100 miles an hour, sometimes picking up the pieces afterwards. At first, we were just trying to take clients from the major providers. We were not a software provider. We were using someone else's software, trying to use it as well as we could. The first year, I would go out on a sales call and I would promise a customer uh, that we would do a customer report. Then I'd go home at night and say, wait a second, I promised a report that we didn't have, now I have to go write it. I was our report writer, I was our only report writer. And over years, as I promised more customers more crazy things, I started learning how to do custom processing objects and all sorts of things in the software and being able to customize the software. Uh, there were more processing objects running on every client that I'd written than the actual software provider had written. When I first saw the ink on the wall as far as how successful we would be, I think it's when we started to write our own products. You know, that was five years into it when Chuck Cooper started and we decided to write our own product with Steve. It was just like, you know, you could see the light at the end of the tunnel. We were going to go pretty big, pretty fast with this product. When we started building WebPay, we had a really simple goal in mind. We really just wanted to put people's paychecks online. I don't think any of us would have imagined that what we really were building was a human capital management suite. I mean, it's kind of amazing to think that this really modest idea that we had has grown into a company that is really competitive in a huge market space. And it's actually pretty incredible to think that this really small idea has become something so big. 
There were several key things. When we started building software and I started seeing it be successful, which was a couple years after that, actually we were just starting that at the time, but probably around 2006, 2007, as I saw our product take shape and I knew it was better than what was out there in the marketplace, I knew we, we had potential for success. And then later, when we brought on Steve Beauchamp and Mike Caskey to run sales, the two of them really were the time. As, as they, I brought them on and as they started going forward, I knew that the company was gonna go from an accident waiting to happen to happening, and it did. In chapter two, that was really the next phase, which was, can we take what Steve Sarowitz had done, this foundation, and could we really scale it? When I brought Steve Beauchamp on board, I did an exhaustive search of all the potential executives in the country, and I interviewed exactly one person, Steve Beauchamp. Steve approached me and wanted me to consider uh, potentially joining Paylocity. Um, to be honest with you, I wasn't necessarily in the market or that serious about it at the time, but when I came here and I had an opportunity to visit him and understand what he had created, um, I felt like there was an opportunity to not only do that from a payroll perspective, but to be able to add on all the HCM components and at the same time take that success from Chicago and, and expand it nationally. So I became very excited about the opportunity. The start of the organization was really around serving payroll needs and really when when Steve Sarowitz started this, it was very centralized in the Chicagoland area. And I think what Steve Beauchamp and Mike Haskey did was expand that to, to be able to serve um, much more of the country and now the entirety of it, but also to think about solutions beyond payroll. And that transformation really was what Chapter 2 was about, taking us from just providing a solution to a payroll administrator to really touching the entirety of the employee base at a company. And so when you roll all that up, the biggest milestone of Chapter 2 was our IPO in 2014, where we successfully went public um, and were able to put cash on the balance sheet and continue to invest in our sales force and R&D for the rest of Chapter 2. When I heard first Steve Beauchamp start talking about going public, to me that's when I really recognized like this company is up to something really big. The thought was always, ah, oh, we're thinking about it, we'll, you know, we'll see, it's not nothing in the near future, right? So when that actually happened, it was like, wow, we're, you know, we're there, we're hitting it big time. So as we all kind of ran fast and furious towards the IPO, at the beginning of that process, we all kind of thought of it as the end game, right? And it became clear that it wasn't really the end. I think of it now in retrospect, kind of like high school. That high school graduation isn't the end, but it's the beginning of our next chapter. And it's really the end of our uh, adolescence as an organization. So by the time we got to that day for the IPO, there had been so much effort, um, so many people involved in it, that there was almost a sense of relief and excitement at the same time that we had kind of arrived. And I think kind of sitting in Times Square and looking at the Paylocity logo on the big marquee board, um, it all kind of hits you at one time. I remember watching the stream of it online and I was kind of screaming like an idiot at my, at my monitor just out of excitement. It was so amazing to see those guys, you know, like I knew all these people and, and this was all just this small vision of this thing that was gonna be one day and to just see it there, I mean, it was just, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And, and we did the right thing, we really did. So there was also a point that every one of those naysayers were saying that we're gonna buy Paylocity, don't worry. They're gonna go out of business. And that, and that day when we went public and that day when I saw all those amazing people who had the vision to start this company at the NASDAQ, it was that, again, that feeling of just accomplishment and pride in what we did. Um, and this little company out of Chicago, man, we were something. It's the closest thing I think I'll ever experience to like winning the Super Bowl. I mean, that's the feeling everybody in that room had, is to think that, you know, when I joined the organization, it was just over 100 employees, and I think 15 or 17 million dollars in revenue. And to then be, you know, pushing, I think, two or 300 million in revenue, and for that moment to have occurred, it was absolutely our Super Bowl. Going public was an affirmation that we, the bets that we took, the big bets that we took, um, paid off. Uh, you know, to give you the color, there was a point very early on in chapter two where we came over here 
and were extremely excited and had this plan. Well, like all good plans, they were blown up instantly by what we would refer to as the Great Recession of our time, the worst financial meltdown in most of our lifetimes. So of course, I get the call from Steve Beauchamp. Because of this recession and the layoffs that our clients are going through and this reduced uh, interest revenue, we actually only have enough money left to make two payrolls and then we're out of cash. So we had to make a decision early on in chapter two and Steve Sarowitz, myself and the other leaders sat down and said, we can either do what most companies are doing, which is tighten our belt and really just try to survive this thing, try to weather it and forget about all these great dreams we had, or we bet it all. And we put all our chips in the middle of the table and we try to grow our way through this. And we all agreed, we didn't come here to sit on the sidelines, we came here to play and we went all in. And it was that decision to do that that got us not only through the recession, but allowed us to grow at this average of about 40% per year in this 10 year chapter two run. It put us in a position to take it public, have that moment of affirmation for all that we had accomplished, all we had been through, all the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that came with it, and now has put us in this incredible position to take advantage of a chapter three opportunity. Chapter one was our formative years. Steve Sarowitz had this vision about being this great SaaS-based payroll company. He created that. Chapter two, Steve Sarowitz then brought in other people like Steve Beauchamp, Michael Haskey, Peter McGrail, and other people like that to really bring the foundation together, to allow the company to grow beyond this small Midwest little company into this nationally recognized uh, human capital management organization. But chapter three, ah, chapter three. The next chapter is really uh, very exciting. So for us, uh, we're going to get um, be much more consultative, help the clients find ways to do things that they didn't know they could do, give them insights into the industry. If you look at the results, they're insane. I mean, what we've been able to do, you know, throughout this, and it's only continually getting better. You know, our, our biggest problem here is growth. I mean, how how awesome of a problem is that to have? We're always changing, and. The job that I'm doing today is different than the job I did six months ago, which is different than the job I did a year ago or two years ago. And I know six months from now, the job is going to change again. And I think that helps keep it exciting and keeps things alive. I think the most exciting thing is the opportunity to really grow and reinvent this industry. Not only make a dent in the HR space, but also in the way that employees are treated at work um, and creating a culture that is really a place you want to spend your day, not just going to work. We're going to experiment a lot. We're going to experiment with different business opportunities, different revenue streams. They're not all going to work, and I think everyone knows that. It's okay if some of these fail, but we're willing to experiment, and that's pretty cool. It's important to me to be able to see something that started so small to grow so big and to be part of that. To be able to see how, when I first started, how things have changed, how things have grown, how the best parts of Paylocity, the culture, the people, um, the family feel has remained no matter how big we get. The best part of chapter three is we shouldn't try to predetermine what's possible. In the same way companies like Apple did, the same way Salesforce.com, Amazon has done, is they started as one very successful thing and then they didn't limit themselves and they've become something so much bigger and so much better than they probably ever thought that they could. We wanna do that same thing and see where we can go. I'm not sure I could have envisioned us sitting here 10 years ago. And there's so many things that we do today that we never even thought of 10 years ago. And so when I think about the fact that we've got great people, um, we have an environment that allows people to really share their ideas, um, and we're really open to a lot of change. That's one great thing about our culture, is it changes all the time. So as I sit here at the start of chapter three, um, $300 million roughly in revenue, I can absolutely see us getting to a billion dollars in revenue. And in many ways, we'll probably have products that we haven't even thought of today. Um, and that's what makes it so exciting. What I would wish for Paylocity um, in the long term, 10 to 20 years, is to rule the world, to take over you know, all the, the markets we possibly can. Thank you so much, Paylocity, for actually giving me the opportunity to actually be with this amazing company. I would thank Paylocity for showing me that I have more potential than what I thought possible. I'm very, very thankful that, they're, that the people that I work with are willing to try something different. Um, they're willing to let things fail. Uh, that's 
very unusual in business today, and it's it's a refreshing way to look at things. Many, many million thank yous. It's given me professional development, personal development, um, amazing opportunities with, to make an impact in a lot of people's careers. I've been able to uh, have a career that I wake up for each morning and I'm, I'm excited about. You know, to, to continue to, to evolve and, and to uh, have that entrepreneurial spirit and the, the innovation uh, that we need to have so we can we can grow. These folks are people that I get to see every day and that I get to um, have created a company with and knowing that there are those people there every day that um, that count on you that you know that if you walked away from from this or if you didn't show up that it would be meaningful to them it, it really makes a difference. I don't care how large Paylocity gets. I certainly hope we continue growing. I certainly hope we're continue, we continue to be profitable and successful. I want Paylocity to remain a good place to work. I want Paylocity to remain a place where people can rely upon us for the products and services we offer. I want us to be a standard of excellence in the industry, which I believe we are today, and I want to remain that standard of excellence. It matters to me that what we do, we do right and we do with integrity.